Hello, my name is Tree Demon, and I'm the Devil Stockbroker. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. Before we begin, please understand I'm not a financial advisor, and none of the following content is financial advice. The following content is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Trading stock carries inherent risk, and you should always respect and understand your own personal risk when considering any investment. Please don't take what I say as gospel, and please do not trade based on the information that I receive and share through my content. Thank you so much, and have a hell of a time in the stock market. Hello, everybody. This is Drew Demon, the Devil Stockbroker. I wanted to go ahead and break down what exactly short exempts are and why I talk about them so much on my channel. This is a device that is used very frequently in the markets, but not a lot of people understand or even know that it exists. So I wanted to take this time to educate everybody so that they understand what I mean by short exempt and why I pay so much attention to them. So first, let's cover what shorting is. Shorting is just simply borrowing a stock out from a lender and then selling it into the market, hoping that the price will go down. Then once the price is dropped, you purchase that share back and then return it to the lender and you keep the difference. A short exempt is different. And a, a short exempt is a tool that is uh, afforded to market makers and certain quote broker dealers. Um, these are banks, investment firms, and um, uh, brokerages. So think TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab, so on. <clears throat> um, but for the most part, market makers. A short exempt is a short which is exempt from the regulation show um, or regulation short. That's uh, reg show according to the SEC. Regulation short or reg show was developed in the uh, mid 2000s after the scheme no known as naked short selling became uh, well documented and understood and became a subject of debate in the Senate. And as a result, the SEC was uh, tasked by the government to develop a regulation surrounding the controlling and uh, enforcement of short uh, of shorting actions and uh, providing a little bit more transparency to the process. They made a valiant effort, but unfortunately left behind a lot of loopholes in how shorting was done. Um, and unfortunately, there are plenty of ways for naked shorting to continue to exist. Um, if you're not familiar, naked shorting is when you uh, sell a stock short, but you do not borrow the stock from anywhere. And you ask, how can you sell something that you don't own? Well, it's a digital system. And the digital trading system provides ways for broker-dealers who define um, who they're able to sell to using their internal trading systems. So when you uh, are in that position where you basically are able to say that you have this inventory, you are required to prove it somehow, but there are plenty of loopholes and ways for them to do that. So they can deliver stocks, air quotes, that have been air quote borrowed from someone, but that may not actually be the case. And in reality, they create synthetic positions such, uh, such by uh, playing with options, by selling uh, puts and calls back and forth in order to create the illusion that they have a larger inventory of lendable shares. So here on Investopedia, we've got a, uh, a brilliant summary, albeit a very vague one, on what short exempt is. So short exempt refers to a short sale order that is exempt from the price test of the Securities Exchange Commission's regulation show. That very vaguely says it's exempt from reg show. Okay, so that's already a big warning. The current implementation of this regulation contains a modified version of the uptick rule, which is uh, which restricts the price of short sale orders on a security whose price is already falling. What this means is that when the price is going down and a, sh uh, a particular stock is placed on the short sale restriction or SSR list, um, it is not possible to short while the price is going down. So if the last price is lower than the previous price on any given tick, then it is not possible to short uh, according to the uptick rule. You can only short the stock while the stock is moving up. The idea was to prevent a dogpiling effect uh, in the stock market whereby shorts would continuously pummel and pummel and pummel and pummel the stock, forcing the price lower and lower and lower and lower. And that would, you know, selling begets selling begets fear begets panic. And then it just becomes this cascading disaster where a stock will sell off by 
50, 60, 70 percent in a single day. And it was a disastrous Wild West in the market before this was put in place. Unfortunately, it didn't really solve the problem. Nevertheless, uh, it's important to understand what the short sale restriction or the quote circuit breaker list is. So if at any point during the trading day, a stock sells off by 10% from its previous day's close, it automatically goes on to the SSR list for the rest of that trading day and all of the next trading day. This is what we refer to as the circuit breaker rule. So certain trades are not restricted by the and may be labeled as short exempt. This means that during the circuit breaker or the short sale restrictions, automatically market makers have the potential to short exempt. According to Investopedia, these exemptions facilitate liquidity and arbitrage in the securities markets. What do they mean by arbitrage? Arbitrage means that you scalp price uh, a little bit of money, just teeny tiny micro amounts of pennies off of a stock during trading. And this is how market makers make their money. They facilitate the market activity by providing liquidity into the market and allowing trades to take place seamlessly between sellers and buyers. When can a trade be short exempt? Investopedia has this very brief breakdown that tells you when a short exempt can be placed, but it's not all inclusive. So I'll go over their definition and then we're going to dive into it a little bit deeper. A trade may be labeled short exempt and executed at a price lower than the national best price if one of the following applies. One, the seller owns the shares being shorted but is restricted from delivering them at the time that the short sale order is placed. The short sale order is being made by a market maker in order to resolve an odd lot position. Three, the short seller is attempting to arbitrage between price differences within the domestic or international markets with certain conditions. Four, the short sale is made in connection to a layoff sale or an over allotment. Five, it executed on a volume weighted average price basis with certain conditions. Although the SEC oversees brokers who issue short sale orders, they do not execute regularly scheduled audits. Instead, the SEC requires broker dealers to self regulate by enforcing their own policies and maintaining records that are subject to audit at any time. This is a tremendous, idiotic, and disastrous way to manage a market which depends on greed in order for its entities to survive. These words of self regulation are an oxymoron and totally paradoxical to the functioning of the securities market. If you put broker dealers in a position where they are able to exempt themselves from the rules and they are, quote, self-regulating, then you are basically taking a fox out of the woods and setting it on the farm in the same coop with all your chickens. They will all be gone by morning. <sighs> that being said, why don't we go into a little bit more detail and see what the SEC's key points are. This is the cliff notes from the SEC talking about the key points of regulation show. It discusses the same things about what a short sale is, example of short sales, how short selling works, and the legalities of it. In very brief detail, they discuss what a naked short sale is. Now, this is not the actual reg, uh, reg show here. This is not the exact verbiage that it uses, but this is the cliff notes or the summary of what it is containing. Okay? So in a Quote, naked short sale, the seller does not borrow or arrange to borrow the securities in time to make delivery to the buyer within the standard three-day settlement period. As a result, the seller fails to deliver securities to the buyer when delivery is due, known as a, quote, failure to deliver or fail. Failures to deliver may result from either a short or a long sale. There may be legitimate reasons for a failure to deliver. For example, human or mechanical errors. One, this doesn't really happen anymore because it's all an automated digital trading system. Human error, and in fact, humans themselves rarely ever, 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 ever touch the trading system at this level. Okay? So let's understand that. There is very little intervention from humans in the actual processing and settling of transactions. The only time where a human error can come into play here is if the DTCC, instead of handling the transaction electronically, goes in manually to settle the transactions because there was some error that took place elsewhere. So unless there is something inherently wrong with the trading system, and I'm sure there are, the trading system handles all of these settlements automatically. Okay? This is 
In reference to the actual physical tr uh, trading of physical certificates rather than book entry form, which, as I said, this is a rare circumstance. It's really not done anymore. Physical trading of certificates just doesn't happen, okay? So let's just throw out the idea of a human or mechanical error in processing delaying um, because, of, uh, because of trading back and forth paper certificates, all right? Let's just throw that out. A failure may also be from a, quote, naked short sale. For example, market makers who sell short, thinly traded, illiquid stock in response to customer demand may encounter difficulty in obtaining securities when the time for delivery arrives. This is four trading days, all right? It's four trading days. Let's hold on to that. Naked short selling is not necessarily a violation of the federal securities laws or the, naked, uh, or the commission's rules. Indeed, in certain circumstances, quote, naked short selling contributes to market liquidity. For example, broker dealers that make a market in a security generally stand ready to buy and sell the security on a regular and continuous basis at a publicly quoted price, even when there are no other buyers or sellers. Thus, market makers must sell a security to a buyer even when they are in te uh, there are temporary shortages of the security available in the market. This may occur, for example, if there is a sudden surge in buying interest in that security or if few investors are selling the security at the time, because it may take a market maker considerable time to purchase or arrange to borrow the security, a market maker engaged in bona fide market making, particularly in a fast moving market, may need to sell the security short without having arranged to borrow shares. This is especially true for market makers in thinly traded illiquid stocks, as there may be very few shares available to purchase or borrow at a given time. This is the important part, okay? Naked short selling in the legal definition of it where it is applied by a market maker is entirely necessary, okay? I won't even try to argue that. That is because market makers make it possible to trade stocks that nobody else is willing to sell. If you are a buyer and you want to buy some know-nothing penny stock that no one else gives a damn about, the market maker will go and find you a share somehow, okay? That's their job. That's what they do. The problem enters in when the market maker is selling short without taking a borrow with no intention to find that share unless they can force the price down low enough for them to cover. When you have naked short selling in this context, the problem arises when the market maker knows that they have full control of the price and they are able to conceal buyers from the exchange. How do they do this? They route the orders through dark pools and internalizers. These are off-exchange trading systems. Why they do this is because they control the pricing there. If they can move your order into an internalizer, they have an inventory of shares, okay? And they can quote you a price that has a very tight bid-ask spread. However, what they will do is they will use shorting and send those short orders onto the exchanges. This has an immediate and profound effect on the national best bid and offer. That is the quoted price that is the best available. What this does is it causes all short orders from the market makers and broker dealers to go directly to the exchanges and therefore because it's fully visible, shows selling on the exchanges, and this causes the price to go down, and selling begets selling. By doing this, the market maker is then able to go back into the exchange, find somebody who is willing to sell a large block of shares, and purchase those, and then reapply it to its inventory. And when they do that, then they can go ahead and provide or deliver you that share which you bought up to four days previously, without being a failure to deliver. When the price goes down in the market, you get screwed, and they will go and find that share, and they will deliver it to you later on. This will satisfy the naked short and prevent it from becoming a failure to deliver. But because the market maker has an additional two days after that to cover their asses, they have even more time to screw with it and make a bigger profit by pushing the price further and further down. Let's review some of the regulations show general requirements that are summarized here in these points, okay? We have Rule 200, which is the Marking Requirements Rule. This requires that orders placed with the broker-dealer must be marked long, short, or short-exempt. This is for self-regulatory and reporting purposes through FINRA. The reason why this is required and is now entered in the reg show filings is because previously, broker-dealers would literally mark a short sale as a long. They would mark the borrow as long, 
and then not report the short. And these were called miss marks. It was an intentional method of defrauding investors by hiding the fact that they were shorting the stock and it made the sales look real and it made the stock go down. But on the marker, on the tape, it looked like a long position. It's literally saying the opposite goddamn thing of what's actually happening. Here is your first reason why you should never, ever, ever trust the market maker or the goddamn broker. Rule 201, short sale price test circuit breaker rule. This is the rule for short sale restriction. Rule 201 generally requires trading centers to establish, maintain, and enforce written policies and procedures that are reasonably designed to prevent the execution or display of a short sale at an impermissible price when a stock has triggered a circuit breaker. That's when the stock goes down 10% in a day. By experiencing a price decline of at least 10% per day, okay? Once the circuit breaker in Rule 201 has been triggered, the price test restriction will apply to short sale orders in that security for the remainder of the day and the following day unless an exception applies. Again, exception. That's the short exempts. Rule 203b-1 and 2, the locate requirement. This is where it becomes important and relevant to you as a retail investor. The locate requirement. Regulation show requires that a broker-dealer must have reasonable grounds to believe that the security can be borrowed, so that it can be delivered on the date of delivery that it is due before effecting a short sale order in any equity security. This locate must be made and documented prior to effecting the short sale. What this means is that if they want to give you a share to sell short, they must locate that share before they give it to you. This is not what happens in practice, especially with short exempts, because the market maker is exempt. Keep a handle on this when I mention a locate. A failure to locate is a naked short. Rule 204, the closeout requirement. Rule 204 requires brokers and dealers that are participants of a registered clearing agency to take action to close out failures to deliver positions. Closing out requires the broker or dealer to purchase or borrow securities of any kind and of like kind and quantity. Note that it says closing out requires the broker dealer to purchase or borrow. That means that they can borrow a share in order to satisfy a failure to deliver. Okay. The participant must close out a failure to deliver for a short sale transaction by no later than the beginning of trading hours on the settlement day following the settlement date. So, from the date that the transaction occurs, it must be covered by the opening bell on the fourth trading day after that. If a participant has a failure to deliver that the participant can demonstrate on its books and records resulted from a long sale or is attributable to bona fide market making activities, the participant must close out the failure to deliver by no later than the beginning of regular trading hours on the third consecutive settlement day following the settlement date. This is referred to as T plus six. So T, the date of the transaction, plus six trading days at the opening bell. If the position is not closed out, the broker-dealer and any broker or dealer for which it clears transactions, for example, an introducing broker, this is cited here, may not affect further short sales in that security without borrowing or entering into a bona fide agreement to borrow the security, known as pre-borrowing requirement. Okay, so that means that if a broker-dealer gets caught doing this and they continue to have outstanding failures to deliver, then they will not be able to affect any shorting at all. They will not be permitted to lend out any further shares because they're in violation. In addition, Rule 203b3 of the regulation show requires that participants of a registered clearing agency must immediately purchase shares to close out failures to deliver in securities with large and persistent failures to deliver, referred to as, quote, threshold securities. If the past failures to deliver persist for 13 consecutive settlement days, the threshold securities are equity securities that have an aggregate failure to deliver position for five consecutive trading days or settlement days at a registered clearing agency, totaling 
10,000 shares or more and equal to at least 0.5% of the issuer's total outstanding shares. As provided in Rule 203 of Regulation Show, threshold securities are included on a list disseminated by a self-regulatory organization, SRO. Although, as a result of compliance with 203, generally a participant's failure to deliver position will not remain active for 13 consecutive settlement days. If, for whatever reason, a participant of a registered clearing agency has a failure to deliver position at a registered clearing agency in a threshold security for 13 consecutive settlement days, the requirement to close out such a position under Rule 203b3 remains in effect. What the hell does all that mean? We're going to go and break this down piece by piece by piece. All right. So the closeout requirement, this is the requirement that anybody in violation that is with outstanding failures to deliver must close that position within a certain number of days. Now, what creates a failure to deliver? A failure to deliver is created after T plus four, when that is the due date for the share to be delivered from a short sale so whoever the buyer is, say I go out and buy a share, market maker goes out and says, hey, I need to borrow a share. I need to borrow one. And the broker dealer is like, ah, I don't have any, but I'll pretend like I gave you one. And then the market maker goes and says, great, sends you a share that it doesn't have and says, I'll get it to you later. All right. The fourth trading day after that transaction occurs, if they have not given you the share by then, it's a failure to deliver. They then start the clock two days if they do not give you the failure to deliver share within six days then they're that's the violation and then they're put in a position where it's like no more shorting at all for a market maker that's disastrous and for the broker dealer they're losing out on profits for every time that they're asked if they can short and they're just like uh no i can't i've been restricted because i'm an asshole who isn't able to deliver on his obligations in addition, let's go into the threshold securities, okay? This is another key piece. Threshold securities are any security which has at least 10,000 shares, but also a minimum of 0.5% of its tradable, that is, outstanding securities have failed to deliver. The key here is the uh, failures to deliver, which persists for 13 consecutive settlement days. Now, this applies on an individual basis, okay? What it means is that the threshold security list, after a stock has had more than 0.5% of its total tradable shares failing to deliver for five consecutive days, it goes on the threshold security list. That puts everybody on watch that's trading this stock, okay? And then any broker-dealer that fails to deliver for 13 consecutive trading days or more, they can be subject to forced closure. And this is why so many traders, especially in retail since the GameStop and the AMC squeezes, have been paying such close attention to the threshold securities list on any stock, is because after that 13th consecutive day, anybody who has been holding outstanding failures to deliver for that many days can be approached by the SEC and told, close your positions now. And they are forced to. It is automated by the system. Or at least it's supposed to be in practice. Whether it is that way in reality or not is not very clear to us. So, eh, kind of just throwing our hands up in the air with that one. The point is, is that if we know that a threshold security has had fa failures to deliver for 13 consecutive trading days, then it creates this uncomfortable position for anybody with failures to deliver in that security. And any entity that is in that violation period is going to put themselves at substantial risk. We've covered all the bases for that, but we still really haven't covered short exempts and why they're so serious. So like I said, short exempts are exemptions from the short sale restriction list. That means that these rules do not necessarily apply. However, the threshold security list applies in all circumstances, okay? And let's discuss what a short exempt is and how it relates to failures to deliver. So there are th several main things that the short exempts are exempted from, okay? So short exempts are not exempted from the marking requirements. Every single trade must be marked long, short, or short exempt. There is no exceptions for this, okay? But the short sale price test circuit breaker rule 
this it does afford an, ex an exception for. So if a stock is trading on the circuit breaker or the SSR list, then market makers are entitled to short exempt a short during a down tick. So if the stock is heading down, it's on circuit breaker. If somebody wants to buy the share from the stock market, then a market maker can respond to that and say, hey, I will get you this share in just a second, literally like a microsecond, but we have to wait for the stock to go up. Let me lend you this share and market short exempt first, okay? Then we'll go ahead and borrow it and deliver it. And that that's okay, all right? That's okay. The locate requirement. This is where the issue arises. Because a locate failure is a naked short, this is where the abuse can occur and also the circuit breaker can be used this way as well. So if a market maker continuously uses short exempts and it goes past the T plus four settlement time, then that short exempt can become a failure to deliver and it must be delivered within two trading days. That creates an issue for the market maker because that's a very short time to settlement. However, it's not as short as real-time settlement, and that is one of the main reasons why everybody really, 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 really wants real-time settlement, because that would take that T plus 4 timeline down to T plus 1, plus the failures to deliver dates of 2. That would bring the entire closeout requirement from T plus 6 all the way down to T plus 3. It would literally cut it in half. I wish that it was place, uh, put in place. However, it's not clear if the SEC is going to adjust the closeout requirements verbiage to comply with this accounting for real-time settlement if and when they finally put it into place. In any case, the locate requirement is a serious issue. If the market maker continues to not deliver on these shares that it has short exempted, then they can push the stock down for up to six days, basically, and they can do it with short exempts, and they can do it during the circuit breaker. And in fact, if a stock is on the circuit breaker, there are more short exempts. More short exempts get applied to the stock on that particular trading day almost every single time. So the circuit breaker doesn't protect the stock. It doesn't do that at all. In fact, it becomes a marker and puts a freaking target on its chest. Basically, the, the, once the stock is placed on the circuit breaker, it gives the market maker the right to say, hey, I need to short exempt everything. And then they continue to do that for every trade. And it's stupid. It, it creates a loophole in the system that allows it to be abused so easily. And the worst part is, is that short exempts apply to every rule that, it's, that you can exempt for. And what I mean by that is, say we're in the circuit breaker, then a market maker can say, hey, I need to take a short exempt because this stock is on SSR list. And it's like, great. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to locate a share because I'm exempt for that too. And they can do that. And the, it's not even mentioned here. But do you want to know who determines whether a stock can be short exempt, whether a short sale can be short exempt? The market maker decides. Again, you have the fox watching the fucking hen house. They get to decide when a short exempt applies. And it's not until the SEC finally has to do an audit that they're like, oh, you weren't supposed to do all of this. Well, I guess we'll fine you a million dollars. Well, what the fuck does that do? It's useless. It's totally useless. Over here, we have a litigation release from the Securities Exchange Commission um, as an example of how they punish people. For doing, <laughs> for doing naked short selling, okay? So this is the example that they use. In this litigation release, Rhino Advisors and uh, Thomas Battian settle claims and agree to pay jointly a $1 million penalty. $1 million. The commission alleges that Rhino and Battian manipulated Sedona's stock price to enhance a client's economic interests in a $3 million convertible debenture that Sedona issued to Rhino's client. The debenture, negotiated by Badium, obligated Sedona to pay the client $3 million on March 22, 2001. The debenture granted the client the right to convert the debenture into Sedona's common stock at a discount to the market price during a five-day period prior to the conversion. Based on this formula, the lower Sedona's price, the more shares the client would receive on conversion. The purchase agreement for the debenture expressly prohibited Rhino's client from selling short shares of Sedona stock while the debenture remained issued and outstanding. The commission alleged 
that despite this contractual provision, Rhino engaged in excessive short selling on behalf of its client prior to exercising the conversion rights under the debenture that this short selling depressed Sedona's stock price. According to the commission, as a result of the depressed stock price, Rhino's client received more shares from Sedona when it exercised its conversion rights under the debenture than it otherwise would have received. Essentially what happened is these two companies, which partnered together, one hedge fund and one underwriter, collaborated together in order to create a, uh, an agreement that would result in the client of, uh, the client of Rhino Advisors to profit by driving a stock price lower that they wanted to acquire. The purpose for this entire convertible note was to provide liquidity to the company that was interested in selling shares to the uh, client, right? So in order to get a better price, they shorted the living hell out of it and they smashed it in order to give them more shares. And then they finally let their foot off of its neck and let the price fly. The SEC caught them. It was a $3 million commission. It was a $3 million convertible debenture, but that was just for it. That was just for the buying rights of the shares. If the price of the shares, and I don't know about Sedona's stock price at this time, by the way, but let's just, let's just hypothesize that the price got slammed down to one cent. Okay. They could have bought 300 million shares for $3 million. And then if they let the foot off of its neck and let the price fly up to $5, then they can just sell it back into the market immediately for literally a 500% profit. Or no, 500 times, 500 times profit. That would be 5,000%. So it's a, it's a drastic and it's, a, uh, and it's probably a hyperbol hyperbolic example, but that's the kind of activity. And these guys only got punished for $1 million. What in the does that do? That's not punishment. These guys had $3 million to just throw at this thing like, mm, yeah, that's that sounds like a good stock price. Uh, I think we'll throw $3 million at it. Now it's absolutely smashed the living shit out of their stock and get it down to as low as possible so we can buy more of it and then sell the company out from underneath them. This could be part of hostile takeover strategies and other sorts of shit that these guys play in the market. These are ruthless motherfuckers and this SEC only penalized them a million bucks. That's what they can pull out of their goddamn couch cushions. It's so stupid. This whole scheme is so stupid. But that's just in related to the short selling. When you mix in naked short selling and short exempts, it gets way worse, man. Right here is an example of exactly what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, what you're looking at here is some data from our stock analysis bot. This is, uh, this is from a bot called Scourge that we have at Hell's Trading Floor, okay? And this is some data from Hook that we pulled just a couple days ago. If you look at the, if you look at the volume on this thing, the stock was uh, going up and up and up for a couple of days, right? Um, and it seemed to be doing decently. But as the price began to climb, it hit this ceiling and got smashed at, uh, at, at two bucks, it was threatening to go above $2, which endangered a bunch of options, okay? So a whole bunch of options that were going to expire in the money on, uh, on February 18th, these would have been call options. They were trying to use short exempts here in order to control the price, in order to keep the price down, okay? It, it, it barely worked. They barely got it to close below $2.50. They literally pinned the price down $0.02 cents below the strike. This is the kind of bullshit that's going on in the markets that nobody else pays attention to. It's so stupid. And I don't understand. Like, the SEC has to know that this is going on, but they just either they don't have the resources or they don't give a fuck to enforce them. They don't enforce these things. They don't look at all of this data that's coming in daily from FINRA, and FINRA's useless. They're not regulating these assholes. They're not doing anything about it. Let's go take a look at another drastic example, and this one should scare the shit out of you. This is the data for a ticker called Mullen, M-U-L-N. This is for uh, Mullen Technologies, which is an EV car company. It's a newcomer car company to the States that uh, I believe they formed themselves uh, about five years ago or so. <clears throat> and they, be they recently became a tradable company on the NASDAQ. They, uh, they IPO'd in November, I want to say. But that's not what matters. See, their price, they were trading at around $13 of their IPO, okay? They were doing pretty good. They had a rising stock, and a lot of people were interested in what they had 
uh, to bring to the table. Um, there was speculation that they can compete with Tesla because they had some really cool looking crossover SUVs and EV sports cars that they're dealing with. And they're partnering with uh, companies like Xiantu, which is a Chinese uh, EV sports car company, and uh, the Dur Group, which uh, does the manufacturing for companies like Porsche and um, uh, Mercedes. So now they have a manufacturing partner, okay? And they had a bunch of uh, they had a bunch of good news. They received uh, they received some investors that were interested in purchasing their stock. They have a little bit of dilution going on, or rather, they have some security some securities agreements with a few companies, mainly investment firms, where they can purchase uh, warrants and convertible debt securities and things like that. So dilutive instruments, but all good for the company of Mullen because they need money in order to start up their manufacturing process. In the last several trading days, this thing hasn't been able to climb over 80 cents. Like it's every time it gets above 70 cents, it starts getting smashed. And it happened again like for the last two trading weeks in a row. It's been ridiculous. I want to point out this is a stock with a float of 17 million shares, at least from the last time that it was reported. It may be a little bit higher than that. There may be up to like 35 million shares available on the float. Okay. The short exempts that I talk about are supposed to be rare, unusual, uh, unusual circumstances, right? Only, only, only for the most rare cases. And there has been 4.69 million short exempts just today, February 23rd, 2022. They short exempted 14. And a half percent of the total short volume, or eight percent of the total volume traded in the stock. What in the hell is this? This makes absolutely no goddamn sense. This is the first time that I had seen it, and that's why I wanted to make this video looking at this particular stock because it's such an extreme example. Like, I thought that three percent ex a short exempt ratio is high, okay? And, and I should back up. A short exempt ratio is the short volume, um, I'm sorry, the short exempt volume divided by the short volume. So it's the percentage of the shorts that are exempt, okay? I used to think that 3% was high, okay? I used to think that 10% was ridiculous, just astronomical. This, this number doesn't even exist in the observable universe as far as I'm concerned. This is the most short exempts I've seen on any ticker. And I analyze this exact data for all stocks in the market that I ever look at. This is the most extreme example that I can ever possibly find. 33% of the shorts on this particular day, what was this? This was March 10, or, uh, February 10th. 33.16% of all the short volume was short exempted that day. And it's just been ridiculous. How in the hell can you short exempt more than 25% of a stock's tradable float? That makes no sense. It's not being used legitimately. Like, what in the hell is the SEC doing? And I can't believe that people aren't more angry about this. And that's why I want to educate retail investors on what short exempt is and why it's so important. This data that nobody pays attention to and nobody knows what it means is exactly where all of the naked shorts are coming from. And it's, how it's, it's where it's all being hidden. And it's legitimized by the market makers. And they just say, well, we're providing liquidity. Bullshit. You're, you're putting your boot on the neck of brand new companies that actually bring competition to the market and are a threat to your incumbent investments in the blue chip stocks on the Dow and the SPY. That's the only reason that I see for doing this to small and mid cap companies. They're driving down the price of these companies artificially by inflating the supply with stocks that don't exist. They're using shares that don't exist. It's so infuriating. So I really encourage you to go on and learn more about this yourself and, and educate yourself, right? The regulation show documents have a ton of information to go through. It's a long document. And Granted, the SEC gave it a valiant effort at the time when they drew this up back in the mid-2000s, 
but it doesn't even come close to addressing the problem. And if we continue to pretend that this is solved, then we're just going to continue to see brand new companies entering the market, getting brought down in their in having their share price smashed down to sub pennies and then get smacked around the whole time, forced to dilute and dilute and dilute themselves to death so that the market maker can make a little tax free profit on the shorts that they never have to cover. That's right. When a company goes under, all the shares that you sold short, you don't have to deliver them. Why does that matter? Because if you never have to buy back the share out of the market to close your short, then it's never closed and the trade doesn't get marked on the taxes. All of this is a tax evasion scheme and it's done by smashing and murdering small and mid-cap companies that have no means to defend themselves and have no idea what's going on. They don't understand why their stock price is plummeting, even though they have so many good things going on for them. The SEC, this is a call out to you. You are not doing your fucking job. You need to do something about this. This is entirely stupid. You are allowing all these companies that are bringing innovation and competition to the markets to be murdered by hedge funds and greedy fucking market makers that are making profits, smashing their stock price to a point where they cannot continue to survive and do business. And this fraud is going to destroy this economy. Do something about it. That's your responsibility. You should be doing something about this. I encourage every retail investor that watched this video to echo the same message. Don't forget what these assholes did to us in 2007. They got away with it without any consequences. They paid speeding fines for things that should be worth capital punishment. They destroyed the economy. They sent people homeless jobless and hopeless into the streets for money. Fuck them. I'm sorry that this video turned into more of a rant than it should have been, but I hope you found it educational and that you can use this information to do something to make a change in the markets and to spot possible investments where you can make something of an opportunity out of this fraud that's going on. One more thing that I will mention before I close out this video. If the short exempts here were not located, then they become failures to deliver, right? Well, market makers still have to close those failures to deliver. So if most of these short exempts were created between 60 and 80 cents, then if the price goes above that, then they have to buy them back at a loss. They get six trading days to smash this thing back below where they sold them short. If the price goes up, even by a cent above, they're taking a loss. And retail has the power to do something about this. Now, I'm not making a recommendation to buy Mullen stock or any stock. I'm just telling people what the possibilities are when this kind of shit happens. If the price lifts enough, and if enough shares get purchased, and the ask is raised above where the market maker can fulfill the orders, and they're forced to use this tool to try to keep up, they dig their own grave. And by doing so, they put themselves in an over-leveraged position where they're forced to close out the trades at a massive loss. And if they do that, then they're forced to buy. They have to buy those shares out of the market in order to do that. And that causes lift on the price. And then they dig their grave further. And that can become a runaway effect. This can be its own form of a short squeeze. It rarely happens in the market. And the only times that I've seen it were in grossly overwhelming circumstances where the market maker had the ability to pin the price no matter what. But it was because of short squeezes and gamma squeezes that it finally got away from them. If you notice this, and you see these short exempts rising like this, the magic number that I look for is short exempt ratio above 
for multiple consecutive trading days. If that is the case, then the market makers are over leveraging themselves. Pay attention to the five day simple moving average. If the five day simple moving average on a single day rises by 15% or over the next three trading days by 5% at a time, then the price has gotten away from the market makers. And it means that they will be taking huge losses. So if you see the five day simple moving average delta rising by 5% every single day for three trading days or more, then you know that a squeeze is coming. And it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a short squeeze. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gamma squeeze. It's just failures to deliver. I hope you found this educational. And again, please recognize that I'm not an expert in market mechanics and I'm not a financial advisor. So please take what I say with a grain of salt, read the filings for yourself, understand the regulation show. It's very important that you understand this. It's very important that everybody educate themselves in the world of finance because this is the world that caused 2008 to happen. And because we didn't understand it, we didn't do anything about it. And because we didn't do anything about it, they're doing it again. And they will keep doing it and doing it and doing it over and over and over again until they make the dollar worthless. And they don't care because they'll just move that money somewhere else. Thank you so much for watching and good luck.